has it, Parashuram, the great Hindu mythological warrior, threw his axe into the sea and a land arose. A monsoon land, rich in spices and natural resources, the Malabar coast was to become an important center along the maritime trade routes to the east. This land, deep in the southern heart of India, now known as Kerala, was from the 12th century onwards a land of warring feudal principalities. It was but natural then that a martial discipline developed and was established amongst the warrior classes and the private armies of the feudal chieftains. It was at this period that a man named Verma set sail from the Malabar coast for China and Japan. And the martial discipline he and his followers practiced profoundly influenced the development of martial arts in the Far East. This martial art, a purely Dravidian phenomenon, reached its zenith in the 16th and 17th centuries of medieval Kerala. It came to be nominated by the Nayas, the warrior community who were the main source of strength for the feudal armies. Martial training was an integral part of the growing up of Nayar youth. The slow decline of this martial art began soon after the coming of the gun and the cannon, introduced by the European colonial powers, the Portuguese, the Dutch, and later the British. In the Kerala of today, there still exists some tradition of this feudal past and the North Malabar region is the land of this martial art, an art that has survived the changes of time, unknown to many. This is Chirakal T. Sridharan Naya, who, in the continuing tradition of the Naya community, is the last of the great masters of this martial art. A tradition which had become confined to a few feudal homes of North Malabar. It is only in recent years, through the efforts of Sridharan Naya and a few other dedicated teachers, that interest in this martial art has been revived and the discipline made accessible to many. the temple of the goddess Badrakali, patron deity of this martial art, known in Kerala as Kalari Payata. This involves body control and martial training, a synthesis of the ancient Indian system of military sciences and traditional medical practices. There are four major stages of learning this martial art. The body exercises, called mitoril, are the first stage of Kalaripayat. Body control training, 
and massage with medicated oils makes the body loose jointed and extremely supple. These preliminary movements are the basis of and common to all the stages of culinary pipe practice. Koltari, the second stage of this martial training, is the art of fighting with sticks, both short and long. The otta is a short curved staff of three hand spans made of tamarind wood, a hard hitting weapon. Sridhar and Naya works closely with a small group of disciples. He believes in teaching them thoroughly. The dark balding man, Vijayan, is one of his oldest and closest disciples. Muchan Payat, or exercises with the short staff, call for a remarkable swiftness of eye and hand, with a speed of action and movement that is the essence of such combat forms. The Muchan, or short staff, is usually 27 inches long and 2 inches thick. Finally, in Kultari, the second stage of Kalari Payat is the use of the Ketukari, or long staff, a weapon 5 to 5.5 feet of solid cane. Bearded Prasad, Sridhar and Naya's son, and Lakshman, a close disciple, practice one of the many variations and techniques of the Ketukari Payat, the art of wielding the long staff. Lakshman falters on a poor defence. Sridhar and Naya, being a perfectionist, intervenes. He assails Lakshman with a contained fury, forcing him to strengthen his defence. Though well advanced in his years, the old master has lost none of his touch. Angatri, the third stage of Kalari Payat, is the art of fighting with sharp weapons. It is only after achieving proficiency in fighting with sticks that the trainee graduates to the use of these lethal weapons. Prasad and Vijayan are evenly matched after years of practice at Valpayat the use of the sword and shield. The many stages of Angatri make use of swords, spears, daggers and other such weapons, each with a specific technique to be practiced and mastered. Kathara Payat, or exercises with the dagger, a part of Angatri practice. The dagger used here is an unusual one, being gripped squarely behind the hilt 
allowing greater versatility in its use. Reader and Nair can afford to sit back in his old age, knowing well that he has trained people who will carry forward this art with a certain dedication, for he has taught them well. I am now 71 years old. If you reverse these numbers, you get 17. I started these things at the age of 17. In those days, bodybuilding activities mainly consisted of training with weights and dumbbells. Within three to four years, I developed a muscular physique. When I saw myself in a mirror, I felt solid and strong. At that time, one of my friends asked me how such a muscular body benefited me. I replied, well, a strong body is good to look at. My friend said, that's not enough. What would you do if you were attacked? Would you be able to defeat your opponent? I replied, of course not. My friend advised me that I would need a special training for this. And so I asked him to tell me what would be required. You would have to learn Kalari Pait, he said. It is the martial art of Kerala. And then you will be able to defend yourself. But who will teach me? I inquired. Then my search began to find someone who would teach me this art. There were a few people around who were able to teach, but they were only acquainted with the primary steps of Kalari Pait. I was initiated into the art by a teacher who lived in Ajikod. From him I learned the basic technique. But naturally, I wanted to know more. Once again my search for a teacher started. It was from Kunjan Gurukal that I learnt all the body movements. It took me a month to master these. I was then about 21 years old. Now I had to learn how to use weapons. Again I had to look around for someone to teach me. I brought Kunji Kanan Gurukal from Badagara to this house. And it was here that I was taught the use of weapons. He had told me that it would take a month to learn. But I managed it within 14 days. After this, the next step was to learn to use sharp weapons. And again I made inquiries. Finally, I discovered a teacher from Madras. He was very old. I persuaded him to come to Kerala. He instructed me here on this very veranda. He had warned me that it would take a month to learn these techniques. We worked with the sword and the shield and the spear too. I mastered all the five steps in the specialized field in just one week. My teacher was very pleased with my performance. I gave him the traditional offering that the disciple makes to the guru. All these teachers are no more. None of them are alive today. Kalaripayat, literally translated, means a gymnasium and the exercises practiced within it. The Kalari, or gym, is a pit dug out of the ground, compacted and covered with a roof of thatched palm or tiles that keeps out the sun's heat and the heavy monsoon rain. The pit is five to six feet below ground level and is a cooler environment for the rigorous training. Amma. 
It is in these gymnasiums that the basic training of all the stages of Kalari Payat is carried out. At one end of the Kalari are the two altars of the Gurutara and the Putara. The weapons are placed and worshipped on the stepped altar of the Putara. The altar of the Gurutara represents the patron deity of this martial art. The novices bow down in reverence before these altars and touch the feet of their guru before they start their practice. These children from surrounding settlements have only recently apprenticed themselves to this colony. As all beginners, they must go through the ritual of the body exercises which are fundamental to all stages of Kalari Payat. A foot massage, generally with sesame oil, prepares the body for the day's training. Short staff or long staff. Practice goes on under the watchful eye of the master, or asan as he is called. Sridharanaya expects that his pupils must be fearless for nothing less will do for a man like him one who has perfected his art Kalari Payat saw its greatest days in the 16th and 17th centuries of medieval Kerala. Out of that period came many warriors whose exploits are today legendary. There was Aramal Chavekar and Tacholi Chandu and women like Matu and Uni Archa. The sagas sung in praise of their lives are to be found in the Vatakkan Partukal, the Northern Ballads of Malabar, a collection of unique folklore. But among them all, the most famous was one great warrior called Tacholi Otenan. This shrine in his memory, near the town of his birth, was built many years ago by local villagers in reverence to Tacholi. Those dedicated to this martial art come to this shrine to perform their varvali 
or individual practice at this hallowed spot for two nights in the year the peace of this quiet shrine is shattered as crowds of people converge to participate in the annual theum of Tacholi Otena. He is the only martial hero for whom the theum is celebrated. This cult of the theum is a kind of Malabar folk dance incorporating local folk heroes who are revered as gods by the local inhabitants. In this theum, the spirit of Tacholi is invoked. The temple dancer, through recollecting and enacting various events from the hero's life, encounters the spirit of Tacholi and supposedly transforms into a god to bless the assembled villagers. On this sacred night, the temple dancer tells of Tacholi's superhuman feats with the Urme, the ultimate lethal weapon of flexible, coiled steel. The invocation continues, and Tacholi is called upon to give his blessings to all assembled. As the night wears on, the Teyam gets more intense and the dancer, in elaborate costume, enacts many more episodes from this great warrior's life. Though today, these Teyams have become cultural and social events, they are a link with a past that had mystery and magic interwoven with everyday life. Ballads are still remembered and sung. And every child of Malabar knows that Tacholi Otenan was the greatest cultural hero of this land. anybody can learn Kalari Payata and that there is nothing esoteric about it. Against opposition from certain quarters, he has demystified the art and has written the only authoritative text in Malayalam on Kalari Payata. When first published many years ago, it met with much resistance from orthodox teachers. But dauntless, he went ahead and taught anyone who wanted to learn this martial art. Today, he is the acknowledged master of this discipline. Sridharan Naya spends a large part of his retired life still dedicated to his pupils. Today's session forms part of Virumke. This is the fourth and last stage of learning Kalari Payat. Dodging and parrying, advancing and retreating, striking with the elbow and with the edge of the palm, hitting at vital points and kicking effectively are all parts of Verunkai. Shridhar and Naya's pupils here will practice attack and defense with machete and dagger and how to disarm an opponent with bare hands.
Sridharan Naya's closest disciples are Vijayan, Lakshman and his bearded son Prasad. He teaches them in great detail and here explains the positions of vital points on the body where one may strike to disable an opponent. A series of vital points from the forehead down to the solar plexus vulnerable and crippling to the opponent is struck correctly. A hard enough blow on the vital point two inches below the armpit can kill a man. And then, how to free oneself from grips. All these aspects are part of Verunkai, or barehanded conflict, and are the final stages of learning Kalaripayat. Kalaya. At home, Sridhar and Nair spends his time in more relaxed ways. Painting is one of his favorite pastimes, and over the years he has painted a large series of such serpent forms. In the twilight years of his life, 
He stresses the importance of body health and hopes that the government will come forward and offer help. Otherwise, he feels that this martial art will soon be forgotten. But there is hope, for a lifetime's work is behind him, a faith that those he has taught will not forget, and that the art will live on after him.